In our last class, we have talked about the very basic, the linear search and the binary search. Today, we'll see two other type of searching algorithms that are very much uh, useful in special cases. Okay, so if you can see, or if you can identify a case where these two type of searching algorithm will can be used, you see that your result, the performance of your algorithm will actually uh, improve by uh, more than 100%. So we have this jump search and the interpolation search. So let's just go to there. So this is the linear search. We have an array when what we have seen the code of the linear search in the last class that we just go one by one. Then we have seen the binary search in the sorted array. We have compared the runtime of between these two type of searching algorithms. And this is the code for the binary search, the function, how it works. And after that, here comes the jump search. So the first concept of jump search is a searching algorithm for sorted arrays. So again, just like the binary search, this searching algorithm can be applied in case of uh, uh, sorted arrays. The basic idea is to check fewer elements than the linear search by jumping ahead of a fixed steps or skipping some elements. Okay, let's go to the <coughs> algorithm. So let's just think that whenever you are looking at an item, okay, so here, you are trying to search 77. So in the linear search, what we do, we start from position zero, then we check one by one, right? In binary search, what do we do? We start from the middle position and we check whether the value that I'm looking for, that is 77, whether it is more than 13 or less than 13. But in this one, what we will do, we'll jump to a position. So as the array size is 16, we'll directly jump to the position number four. Why? Because the square root of array size is four. And we'll check whether the element that I'm looking for, that is 77, is situated in the array number four or not. Now, if we assume that array index starts from zero, so this is the zero location, this is the first location, this is the second, third, fourth. So array four will point to this three. So obviously this is not 77, right? Then what we will do? after seeing that this is not 77 okay what we will do we will jump from 0 to 3 so what we did we did two comparisons initially we compared with first element and after we have seen that the first element is not there we'll jump by four elements so from 0 to 4 index now as you can see that here uh, that index that we're looking for okay is also not 77 so again what we will do we'll again jump four position so we'll come from this position to this position. Now here you ca it can be a calculation mistake that I'm trying to jump four position, but if I say that two, two to three, three to five, five to eight, it's a three position jump, right? So this is a technical uh, glitch. So let's assume that we're jumping uh, three position here, okay? So it depends on how you set up the loop. So if the increment value is, is starting of the loop, in that case, the I will be changed one way. If the increment value is, uh, after the loop that is the post condition and the precondition it might change a little bit but the idea is same that you are jumping from one position to another position okay and again in this one that you have reached position number eight and you have seen the search number that you're looking for is far less than 77 okay then again you jump again you jump and then suddenly after making a jump you see the value that you're looking for is 77, but the value that you currently have is 89, which is larger than 77. What does this mean? This means you have somehow skipped a part of it. Okay, that means you have either the value 77 is not present or it's present and you have somehow skipped it. Now, what can you do? Then in this case, what we do, we actually decrease the iteration or decrease the loop by index one. So we jump back one step. And if we jump back one step, in this case, the result will match. So we have found the value 77. Now, the, there are two questions here. First of all, that if the value doesn't match, let's assume I am looking for 75. Okay, and clearly the value 75 is not here. So according to this condition that I have just seen, that if suddenly I was checking 89 and I saw that the 89 is actually larger than 75. So I started to jump back, right? One step. The first question is that how long I will keep jumping back? Because from uh, if I jump one step, I will not get 75. If I jump another step, I will not get 75. It will keep going on like this. So the question is how to control this, that how many steps I have to jump back. Secondly, 
is it actually better than the linear search to answer the second question obviously it's better than linear search why because if i start from the beginning okay again so in the linear search if i wanted to look for this item okay i had to do one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve i had to do 12 comparison i have to run my loop 12 times but in this case i started from zero in the jump search then i jumped to the second position from there i jumped to eight from there i jumped to 34 maybe uh yeah 34 and from there i jumped to 89 so one iteration two three and four and after that i had to take a step back so five so for this 77 if you use linear search you had to use 12 but in case of jump search you need to stay only five obviously this cannot be the ideal case there might be other cases as well but to answer our question it is better now the second question is that uh no, sorry the first question that i asked that if somehow i am looking for an item that is actually not there like 75 okay in that case what i will do like how many steps i will jump back what is the difference between a item that is not there and keep going back for item that is there so let's just go one step forward to answer that question so the complexity of this algorithm is square root of n the linear search complexity was order of n the binary search was order of log n and in this one the time complexity is order of square root of n so that means if you have an array size of 1000 it will take only 10 seconds to sort the items which is obviously very much faster right now the first question that i was talking about this the code will actually answer that question so let's go through the code again this is our function okay the function is the jump search function okay and in this function i am passing as a parameter two things the array and the value now don't get confused with the syntax this is a syntax in one language okay you can use the syntax in c in that case it will look something like this okay but the basic thing is we'll pass an array and a parameter in this function now first of all what we will do we will first find out the length of the array to calculate the jump size so previous example the length of the array was 16 that's why we jumped by four position okay and then we'll set two uh, parameters left and right to zero zero now this one actually almost similar to the binary search okay so this two will actually help us to keep track that where we are going to answer our first question so the loop condition is if left is less than length array that means the left index which is zero initially okay let me uh, you so initially the value of left is actually uh, left is zero the value of right is zero and the jump is four okay for our array now as i check the first condition in the while loop the value of left is obviously less than the array size right which is 16 and array left which is array left array left means array zero is obviously less than the value which is 77 so let me just write them down here as well so value that i'm looking for is 77 so the value that i'm looking for is 77 and array left that is array zero is zero so obviously this condition is true and when this condition is true what do we do we we change the right value with right equals to minimum of two operators so what are those two operator let's see first operator is length array which is 16 minus 1 so 15 so let me write it down so this part will return 15 and left plus jump so left plus 0 and jump is four so this will return four now this is just a simple mean function which will return the minimum of these two parameters so obviously we can see the minimum is four so the right will be changed to four okay and then if if the array left okay we uh, what is the value of left again zero right so if array left is less than value okay which is 77 okay and array right okay let me erase this part and array right is greater than value okay so array right is uh, 4 and if i uh, array 4 is 3 so obviously array 3 is not greater than 77 okay so array 3 is not greater than 77 so this condition is not true that means this break condition will not occur 
So what will happen after considering this condition, we'll go for this one. Left equals to left plus jump. So initially left was zero. So if I do left plus jump, left will become four. So this is our first uh, iteration of the loop. Okay, we're still not done. Again, the loop will go back. Okay, we're still doing the loop. This part is outside of the loop. How can I tell? Because of the indentation. You see, this part are inside the loop and this part is outside the loop. And then again, it will keep going on. So for the second iteration, the left equals to four. Length of the array, which is 15, obviously more than four. So this condition is true. And array left, which is three, okay. Array left, which is three is obviously less than 77. So this condition is also true. So we'll enter the loop. In the loop, right equals to mean, again, mean of array minus one, which is again 15 and left plus jump. So now what is left four and jump equals to four. So four plus four, it will be eight. So again, the minimum of these two will be eight. So the value of the right will be updated to eight. So let me erase all this. Okay. Now, so the value of the right is now eight. Now, array left, which is four, is obviously still less than zero. And array right, uh, which was, I think it was 35 from the last example. I should have kept the example in this one, my bad. So array right, which was 35, is obviously not large than, so this condition is not true. This part is true, but this part is not true. So this break condition will not occur. Again, the value of left will be left plus jump. So it will be four plus four equals to eight. And same way, we'll keep going on, going on, going on until we find the item. Now, the first condition, as I was, uh, first question as I was talking about that, how the loop stops. You see, this break, break condition helps to stop the loop. Because when you reach, reach an element which is not present in the array, this both condition don't get satisfied. Because you cannot come back until you go a certain step, number one. Number two, okay, if I need to come back, how I do that? that okay sir i have reached 89 okay and we can see that 89 is larger than 77 so i need to track back so what will happen in that case this if condition that you see in the screen let me erase this this if condition that you see in the screen it will trigger how you see the value of the left which is obviously less than 77 so the value on the left was 35 the value on the right is more than 77 so this if condition will be true, true. And uh, you will break from this loop. So you will come out here. Now, after coming here, you will check that whether you have already accessed the size of the array by using this if condition. So obviously we didn't still uh, surpassed the size of the array. So let's come to this one. So we will update the right again, but again, using the same mean operation you see here that we did, no, not, nothing, no difference, okay? Then we'll come here, the while loop. So the while loop will start from the right side. That means from 89. And from 89, what you will do, it will actually increase, okay, it will increase its value by one and it starts checking. Okay, now remember the value of i is left. That means i started from 35 and the value of right is 89. So what we're doing at each iteration, we are going one by one and we're checking the values. If the values are found, then it's done. If not, we return minus one. Now, I, I know it's hard to remember because I have given you a lot of informations, but don't worry, I will pause the video and you can watch the video and pause it and then practice on your own. And still, if you have confusion, I will again explain it in the next class. But the basic idea that you need to remember about the jump search, let me repeat that one. First of all, it's faster than linear search. In some cases, it might even cross uh, the binary search, but that is highly unlikely. Secondly, the number of operations that you need to do is much, much less. And that is the basic reason is it's actually faster. But what is the uh, problem with jump search? The first problem is you need a sorted array. This is the first problem. Second array, uh, second problem is that, that not only you need a sorted array, but the implementation is complicated. The linear search implementation was very much simple, if you remember, but this one is a little bit complicated. So let me stop the video for jump search now.